When you're doing astrophotography from the city, very often you'll be using a monochrome camera with narrowband filters, and with that, you have to choose a color palette to use when you combine all of those monochrome images. The most well-known is the Hubble palette, and in my opinion, it's been a huge pain in the butt. Uh, but finally, these days, I think I finally uh, cracked the code for a version of the color palette uh, that I've been using and I think gives good results and I want to show you that today. Hey guys, Squiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So yeah, today we're going to talk about the Hubble palette, which is a pretty terrible palette uh, a lot of the time because it does involve combining the channels with H alpha and the green channel, and then it involves removing the green, which I never quite understood, making it like kind of a bicolor image. It can give those very nice golden and turquoise blue or whatever, like deep blue, it's beautiful, but I, I don't love it. And one of the big reasons that I don't love it is that I've never been good at it. I, I never managed to get those beautiful colors that others have been getting. And so I, over the years, I've done multiple ways of doing narrowband. And finally, these days, I think I cracked the code. I have my own little version of the Hubble palette. I want to share it with you. Uh, today, we're looking at uh, the Rosette Nebula. That uh, This is data that I took almost four years ago from my rooftop balcony here uh, in Tokyo. And it's using uh, Astrodon narrowband filters in H-alpha, sulfur-2, and oxygen-3. And here we have the results. And you can see that I've already stretched the images. I've actually uh, used the uh, easy processing suite, easy soft stretch to a target median of 0 0.15 so that we're not you know, blowing out the uh, features of the nebula. And the normal process for the uh, Hubble palette would be to use pixel math or something like LRGB combination, which you can use when the channels are no longer linear after you've stretched them, which we've done. And uh, we'd be just like combining the channels like here. We'd get a very green image like we see here, and we'd be using SCNR to, uh, to kill the, the green. And then we have like a bicolor image. I don't like that. I've never managed to make those images look good. I don't know what the secret is. I have my own version now. So we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the settings of the LRGB combination. And in particular, we're gonna play with the channel weights and the green channel weight. Um, if I put the green weight to something like 30%, which is a value that worked very well for a California nebula image that I had recently, and I click on apply global, I've chosen sulfur 2 as the red, H alpha as the green, and oxygen 3 as the blue, the standard Hubble palette with the H alpha as the luminance. Once I create the image, you can see it's extremely magenta. We're losing a lot of the color. And if I invert the image using Control I, or I could be using the um, invert process here, it's the same thing. Then I remove the green using SCNR. And then I do Control I again. Uh, we're, we're going back almost the same colors. It doesn't work. I don't like it. So we're going to close that. I found that for this image, and just 5%, um, or 0 0.05 can make a big difference. 0 0.75 works well for me. So I'm going to generate the image with 0 0.75. Here it is. I am going to um, invert the image with Control I, do some SCNR, invert it back again, and then I'm going to use the StarNet process to remove the stars. And I'm going to make sure to create the star mask so that we can keep that star mask to be used later. Here it is. This is the star mask. I'm going to put it in icon and forget about it. Now the image itself has kind of this issue here where we have those black rings that will never quite go away. Uh, so I don't like this. And the reason for that is that we have different star sizes between like H alpha and oxygen three, for instance. In oxygen three, the stars are more bloated. And also it, it's kind of like the fault of my lens as well. Uh, so I'm actually going to close this and what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck create star mask and on my nonlinear images, 
uh, I am going to just remove the stars of each of those images one after the uh, other. And now that I've done that, I can use the LRGB combination again. This time I'll check chrominance re noise reduction uh, because it's like the final time and it's on the nebulosity. Then I play, I'll press the global apply global button and we'll get our final image. And here we are. So still the background is magenta. I don't like that. I'm going to invert the image. I'm going to remove the green and I'm going to invert it again. Now, in theory, we could get a very similar image by when, by doing the normal Hubble palette that I did at the very start of this video before abandoning the, abandoning the approach and then using this amount of SCNR to remove a bit of the green. But I find the results to be different, not quite the same, and I prefer the approach that I'm taking right now. So here we are with the image and I like those colors. I like this green is here. I like this like uh, kind of brown slash red kind of color around and I like the blue in the middle. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into do some uh, curves, curves transformation. We're going to play with the RGBK curve and I'm going to do something pretty simple, which is to increase. I'm going to open a preview first. I'm going to increase the overall uh, brightness and maybe decrease like the, the shadows here so that we have more contrast. Okay, here it is. And now we can see a bit better what we're going to do. The next step that I have is I'm going to create a mask because we'll want to apply the changes that we have on the Rosette Nebula and the neighboring um, clouds of gas. So I am going to extract a deluminance using this button here. And once this luminance is extracted, I'm going to use a histogram transformation. We could use range, range selection, but range, range selection is a bit more violent in terms of separating areas. And sometimes it can show in the final image. So very often I prefer to use histogram transformation on this luminance image. I'm going to cut out a lot of the darks. I'm going to increase like the uh, luminosity overall. And I'm going to play with the dark slider here to include the nebulosity without including too much of the background, something like this. And the advantage of doing that is that the heart of the nebula is not pure white like you would have with range selection tool. So we still have like gradation of the brightness levels and we don't have too much of a shock between very different brightness levels. Uh, this is going to do pretty well. So I am going to apply this histogram transformation to the Rosette Nebula. And then I am going to apply a convolution. So convolution will blur out the image. I can choose my standard dev here and I'm going to change yeah, to maybe 13. Apply this and we see we've blurred the mask out. That's good enough for me. I'm going to apply the mask to my rosette. And then we're going to uh, stop showing it. It's still going to be applied there. We can see it because the tab is brown here uh, and there's a mask applied. Now we can go in curves and do some more fun stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to do is play with the hue curve. The hue curve is extremely sensitive. So I like to place uh, three points along the curves, along the curve to solidify it into place. And then I can play after I put the preview on with the top curve, you can see it can, it changes the blue here, the top of the curve. And I can uh, play with that level to some extent to a blue that I like or not, <laughs> you know, or whatever you like and works for you. And if I go to the bottom, I'll be able to play with the red. And you can see here, I like what I'm seeing here because I'm changing the outside of the uh, rosette nebula to have like a rosette kind of red uh, color there, which is something that I like. So we can play with that. I can be less aggressive by playing just with this area. It's kind of off up to me. And here I can play more with the uh, the blue. I can, you know, it, it's a very sensitive tool. There's lots of combinations that are possible. And I think this is the kind of color that I like. So we can apply this. Now I'm going to reset the curves and we're going to play with a bit of saturation, increase the saturation. I'm going to open the preview again. Here it is. We're going to increase. Um, and now we're going to play actually with the blue, green and red channels. But let's start with the red curve actually. So 
I'm going to increase that red curve because I like that it adds this warm tone to the Rosette Nebula in this case. I can go to the uh, blue curve and see what increasing it does. It kind of like uh, cools the image down. Uh, so it's a nice counterpoint to the red increase. And I can decrease to some extent the uh, green to get even punchier uh, colors. So it's very sensitive to adjustments and it's really to taste and you really want to have a well calibrated monitor when you're doing that because what you're seeing here might not be the end result on your smartphone for instance uh, we can also play with the a and b curves those are extremely sensitive so you can see the b curve will make the uh, colors go in one direction or the other it can be extremely sensitive so i'm just going to apply a very slight change on the uh the b curve here and we can do the same with the A curve. Again, like warmer to the top, colder to the bottom. So I'm going to do slightly warmer, something like that. And you can see like the result of those small manipulations across the, uh, the whole image. I'm going to decrease a bit the red. And then we can also go into the C curve, the chroma, to increase the punchiness of the image. If we go too far, the red will go a bit too overboard, but you can see what we can accomplish. And there we are. And so that's my way of dealing with the Hubble palette. You can do more changes, play with the hue, play with the color curves, uh, but th my combination is a bit different than what's usually recommended, but we end up with some green left over. We can play with the tone of the image. We can play with the color of the image. And my next steps would be very standard next steps. They, I might be doing uh, some uh, script uh, remove, after removing the mask of uh, dark structure and hands. Probably pretty low value here on the Rosette Nebula. I might be doing some local histogram uh, equalization at a very low level. I might be doing some um, medium wavelength, wavelets to uh, sharpen the image a bit. I might be bringing this image into Tobas Denoise to denoise it. But the final step after I've done all of that um, would be to simply add back the stars that we removed in the first place. So I am going to go inside pixel mass for that. And this formula is $t for target plus the name of the star mask, which happens to be star mask. So here it is, and I can just apply it to this image. And uh, no, I'm going to remove that. Sorry, I need to first um, remove the mask. And now I can apply it. There it is. And we can then go inside the easy processing suite, do a very little bit of star reduction to make the stars a bit less obvious on the image. Again, it is to taste. And that's pretty much my latest technique to blend the, um, the colors of Narrowband together. It works pretty well for me. Uh, this is not the best result that I got on the Rosette Nebula. I went a bit fast, but um, I'll be putting the end result at the end of the video. I also got some very good results with this on the California Nebula, which you should be able to see on your screen right now. I'm really happy with that particular image. And this is a reprocess. The Rosette Nebula is a reprocess. It is far, far better than uh, what I had achieved uh, four years ago. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope, I hope that you learned something. I hope that this little trick that I have here works for you. And uh, if you like this, if you like this uh, kind of information about astrophotography and your new channel, welcome to the channel. You may want to consider subscribing, clicking that bell uh, button. Uh, leave a like on the, on, the on the video so that YouTube knows it's an interesting video to show to other people as well. It's really the only way that uh, my channel gets noticed. You can leave a dislike if that's your jam. And a comment is always welcome if you have tips and tricks about uh, such processing. As always, again, thank you so much for watching. Most important, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.